हेलो आई आनंद जैन फ्रॉम हनुमानगढ़ राजस्थान वेलकम्स यू टू योर फेवरेट श्रीदेवी क्लासेज यूट्यूब चैनल वेयर वी इनकल्केट इंटरेस्ट एंड कॉन्फिडेंस इन साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग सब्जेक्ट टुडे इन आवर प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड क्लास ट्वेल्थ फिजिक्स इन आवर चैप्टर अल्टरनेटिंग करंट सर्किट्स वेल अंडरस्टैंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट to analyze alternating current circuit the phasor representation and this introductory part first video we'll learn how a rotating vector called as phasor represent instantaneous magnitude of sinusoidal quantity and how this graphical approach is used to find out summation or difference of two sinusoidal alternating quantities of the same frequency in its next part we have explained all the mathematical basis of phasor representation and how phasor is analytically used to find out some difference product or division of sinusoidal quantities let's start this introductory part first of phasor representation in study and analysis of alternating current circuits we have to perform various arithmetic operation on two or more sinusoidal quantities of the same frequency and such arithmetic operations may be summation of two three currents or voltages it may be subtraction of currents or voltages or it may be calculation of power by product of voltage and current and we can also find out current by dividing impedance from voltage so for all those arithmetic operation of summation subtraction multiplication or division we need a simple convenient technique and that is phasor representation for summation or subtraction among two or more alternating quantities of same frequencies and same or different phases we can use point by point graphical plotting method as here we have given this black curve i1 current and this blue wave i2 current and we have to find out summation of those two currents so at time instant 1 instantaneous magnitude of black wave and blue wave are added together and this addition is represented by a point on brown wave and similar calculation can be done at all time instants say at position 2 this is magnitude of i1 current this is magnitude of i2 current and the two i2 current is added to i1 and get this point on brown wave and by this graphical plotting method at every time instant we can plot the summation wave and can find out magnitude and phase position of summation the same calculation can be done using technometric identities we can make summation or subtraction of two technometric functions and our two current i1 and i2 are represented by respective technometric function as i1 is a standard sinusoidal signal which starts with zero instantaneous magnitude at equal to zero and increase in positive direction and has amplitude 3 ampere so its mathematical equation is 3 sin omega t the other i2 current got a phase difference and it leads i1 current by a phase difference angle of theta so it attain its positive peak at theta angle before positive peak of i1 and its amplitude is 4 ampere so its mathematical equation is 4 sin omega t plus theta now for summation sin a plus b formula can be used and by that sin omega t plus theta become sin omega t cos theta and cos omega t sin theta now we can sum up terms of sin omega t as 3 plus 4 cos theta and term of cos omega t become 4 sin theta and when we use sin c plus d formula this summation 3 plus 4 cos theta can be treated as i cos alpha and this 4 sin theta can be treated as i sin alpha and for given value of theta we can find out magnitude of i and value of alpha with this technometric identity and if i have to add three sinusoidal current i'll make summation of two currents first and then we'll add the third current in this addition of first two and likewise we can add any number of sinusoidal currents accuracy of graphical plotting method to find out magnitude and phase angle of resultant current is doubtful whereas in second method of technometric identity we can make summation of only two quantities at a time and for summation or subtraction of more than two sinusoidal signal it take too much time 
and both these methods are quite tedious cumbersome inconvenient and time consuming now these summation subtraction calculation can be done by simple graphical or analytical tricks using the concept of phasor representation we'll first learn what is phasor representation and then we'll study how summation or subtraction can be performed by phasor using simple graphical tools where phasor become just like vectors in calculation for study and analysis of alternating current circuits a simple direct graphical and analytical method is known as phasor representation and this concept of phasor representation is introduced by cp stanmets as per stanmets phasor representation concept a sinusoidal alternating quantity is represented by a, a rotating vector and such rotating vector are known as phasor and representation of instantaneous magnitude and behavior of sinusoidal alternating current and voltage by rotating vector is known as phasor representation time varying instantaneous magnitude of standard reference alternating sinusoidal voltage is given by this technometric expression where vm is peak magnitude or amplitude of voltage omega is angular frequency of supply voltage which is related to hertz frequency as omega is equal to 2 pi f and this sinusoidal time variation expressed by this mathematical relation is plotted as a time varying sinusoidal alternating magnitude and we can represent this time variation on horizontal axis we have time and on vertical axis we have instantaneous magnitude and this variation of instantaneous magnitude with respect to time can also be represent by phasor as per concept given by cp stanmets and as per phasor representation a phasor is denoted by this mathematical expression and imaginary part of this phasor presentation on complex number system imaginary part is represented as vertical projection of this rotating vector and this rotating vector is nothing but phasor and vertical projection of this rotating vector or phasor or imaginary part of this mathematical expression represent time varying instantaneous magnitude of sinusoidal supply voltage in phasor representation this is magnitude of phasor which is amplitude of supply voltage this omega is rotating velocity of phasor in anti clockwise direction and this omega is equal to angular frequency of supply and with multiplication of time omega t represent rotation of phasor vector in anti clockwise direction and this zero represent angle with horizontal reference of the phasor and this zero means our reference phasor which is a standard sinusoidal wave is on horizontal reference and as this phasor rotate in anti clockwise direction with constant angular velocity equivalent to angular frequency its projection on vertical axis represent instantaneous magnitude as time progress this horizontal axis represent that progress of time and at the same time the phasor which is at horizontal reference at zero angle with time when rotate with omega angular velocity in anti clockwise direction after time t it makes an angle omega t from horizontal reference and its projection on vertical axis as represented by this brown line represent instantaneous value at that time and as time elapses if we consider one cycle equivalent to 360 degree at time corresponding to phase of 60 this rotating phasor will rotate and takes a position 60 degree from horizontal reference and its projection on vertical axis represented by this blue line represent instantaneous magnitude at that time instant as time progresses and instantaneous magnitude attain 90 degree phase this rotating phasor also rotate by 90 degree and occupy this new position and now its projection on vertical axis is equivalent to peak value or amplitude and further rotation of phasor reduce its projection on vertical axis and that represent a reduction in instantaneous magnitude and when phasor rotate and complete half cycle its projection on vertical axis become zero and further rotation of phasor will reverse polarity of voltage and now voltage signal become negative and at this particular instant 
its projection on vertical axis represent negative peak amplitude instantaneous magnitude onward rotation of phasor reduce negative instantaneous magnitude and as phasor makes one complete rotation one cyclic variation will produced as projection on vertical axis and further rotation of phasor repeat the similar type of time varying alternating signal waves so we can say this sinusoidal time varying variation can be represented by a phasor of magnitude vm rotating with omega angular velocity in anti clockwise direction and at t equal to 0 having 0 degree angle from horizontal reference so we can say this time varying technometric expression this graphical plot or this rotating vector at t0 position and rotating in anti clockwise direction with omega radian per second angular velocity represent the same quantity standard reference sinusoidal alternating voltage as shown by this technometric expression or this graphical plot or represented by this phasor expression or drawn with this vector line at t equal to 0 if a sinusoidal time varying alternating quantity won't have zero instantaneous value at t equal to zero and it start with either positive or negative non zero value then in that case we can express such sinusoidal quantity by general technometric expression where am represent amplitude of sinusoidal quantity omega is angular frequency and phi represent t0 instantaneous magnitude or t0 phase angle and if say this phase angle is 30 degree plus then such sinusoidal quantity will start with half of peak instantaneous value at t equal to 0 and such sinusoidal quantity can be represented by a phasor with magnitude equal to amplitude of sinusoidal signal and this e raised to power j omega t represent rotating nature of this phasor which rotate with angular velocity equal to angular frequency in radian per second in anti clockwise direction and this phi represent t0 initial position of phasor with respect to horizontal reference and it is in our case given as 30 degree so this phasor at t equal to 0 produce its vertical axis projection half of its amplitude and when it travel by 60 degree and got this position it will have peak positive instantaneous magnitude and further 90 degree rotation in anti clockwise direction represent condition when current alter its direction and voltage alter its polarity and cross zero position and further movement of rotating vector or phasor makes sinusoidal instantaneous value negative and when phasor rotates and attain this 270 degree position it will have negative peak instantaneous value further rotation reduce negative instantaneous value at this horizontal reference position this sinusoidal varying quantity again alter its direction crossing zero and when it come to its initial position this wave form will be produced as projection on vertical axis so we can say this technometric expression this sinusoidal time varying wave diagram and this rotating vector or this phasor expression all represent the same thing and representing this time varying sinusoidal alternating quantity by such rotating vector is known as phasor representation where magnitude of this vector represent amplitude of sinusoidal quantity angular velocity in anti clockwise direction is corresponds to angular frequency of signal and its t0 position with horizontal reference indicate the phase angle or t0 instantaneous magnitude of sinusoidal quantity and its rotation in anti clockwise direction will produce time varying projection on vertical axis and that projection on vertical axis or imaginary component of this phasor expression represent instantaneous magnitude variation of sinusoidal quantity with respect to time phasor representation or phasor diagrams are graphical way of representing the magnitude of sinusoidal quantity and phase difference relationship between two or more alternating quantities and phase difference among sinusoidal quantities are represented by directional relationship of vectors at any time moment and if we have two voltage and current sinusoidal signal let current is standard sinusoidal reference alternating signal with 
फेज एंगल जीरो और टी जीरो इंस्टेंटेनियस वैल्यू जीरो देन इट्स एम्पलीट्यूड आई एम बिकम द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ वेक्टर दिस ओमेगा एंगुलर फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ साइनोसोडल सिग्नल बिकम एंगुलर वेलोसिटी ऑफ रोटेशन इन एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन एंड दिस करंट फेजर इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई दिस ब्राउन वैक्टर पोजिशन नाउ हेयर दिस वोल्टेज लीड्स करंट बाई एंगल फाइव एंड इनिशियल पोजिशन ऑफ वोल्टेज फेजर इज रिप्रेजेंटेड विथ फाइव एंगल फ्रॉम हॉर्जोंटल रेफरेंस एच शोन हेयर विथ मैग्नीट्यूड इक्वल टू एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ वोल्टेज सिग्नल नाउ बोथ दीज साइनोसोडल क्वान्टिटी वोल्टेज एंड करंट गॉट सेम एंगुलर फ्रीक्वेंसी और फेजर गॉट सेम एंगुलर वेलोसिटी ऑफ रोटेशन इन एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन सो द म्यूचुअल एंगल बिटवीन दीज टू रोटेटिंग वैक्टर ऑलवेज रिमेन्स इक्वल टू द फेज डिफरेंस बिटवीन वोल्टेज सिग्नल एंड करंट सिग्नल सो वी कैन से फेजर्स आर बेसिकली रोटेटिंग वैक्टर्स एंड देयर वैक्टर लाइन इज स्केल्ड टू रिप्रेजेंट द मैग्नीट्यूड एंड देयर एंगुलर पोजिशन रिप्रेजेंट देयर फेज नाउ दिस लेंथ ऑफ फेजर can either represent peak magnitude as now we are treating them but they are in standard practice got their scaled length equivalent to their rms value and the angular position of these rotating vector when frozen when they are stopped with no rotation then their relative position represent the phase difference between sinusoidal quantities one can appreciate stenmates concept of phasor representation if we understand summation or subtraction of alternating signals by the concept of phasor and we'll soon discover that phasor analysis is nothing but vector analysis and phasor summation is just like vector summations and when sinusoidal quantity i1 sin omega t and i2 sin omega t plus theta are respectively represented by their phasor i1 at horizontal line and i2 with making angle theta with horizontal line and these rotating vectors can be treated as simple vectors if their rotation is frozen as in t0 position and phasor summation become simple vector summation similarly after a certain time interval at time instant 2 when respective phasor rotates by certain time angle as rotating velocity of i1 and i2 is the same so both will rotate by the same angle in anti clockwise direction so their relative position will again have theta angle in between i1 position and i2 phasor position and if rotation is frozen these phasors become vector and the sum of these vector represent this brown vector and we'll found that this brown vector makes the same angle alpha as it was making with i1 earlier at time instant 1 it means the angular rotation of phasor i1 and phasor i is same that means this resultant vector summation is also a rotating vector of same angular velocity or same angular frequency so two sinusoidal quantity when summed up give a third sinusoidal quantity of the same frequency and this summation can be achieved by phasor representation just like vector calculations when we have to find out sum of two sinusoidal alternating current i1 sin omega t and i2 sin omega t plus theta the two sinusoidal quantity are expressed by their respective phasor i1 sin omega t got a phasor of vector length i1 with angle zero from horizontal reference and this second i2 sin omega t plus theta is represented by this blue vector of magnitude i2 making angle theta with horizontal reference and the projection of these two phasor on vertical axis i1 got zero projection and i2 got this projection at t0 and the sum of the two is the vertical projection of resultant vector summation and that represent sum of instantaneous magnitude of i1 and i2 as resultant sum i now all three phasor rotate in anti clockwise direction and after certain time from 1 to 2 they have new positions i1 got this position i2 got this position and if we take vector summation by parallelogram of forces neither magnitude of first vector nor magnitude of second or angle between the two has changed so the resultant will have the same magnitude at all time positions and resultant makes an angle alpha 
and that alpha is given as 10 and phi is equal to i2 sin theta divided by i1 plus i2 cos theta and neither i1 nor i2 nor the angle between the two phases has changed from position 1 to 2 so this alpha is again same it means angular movement of i1 and i phasor is the same so both are rotating in the same direction with same angular velocity equal to angular frequency so this brown resultant vector is also a rotating vector or phasor of same frequency and at this two instant the vertical axis projection of first vector represent this instantaneous magnitude second vector represent this instantaneous magnitude and when you add together this complete represent sum of instantaneous magnitudes of two currents re represent instantaneous magnitude of resultant so this brown vector which is rotating in anti clockwise direction with ang omega angular velocity is also a phasor and that phasor represent the sum of two current i1 sin omega t and i2 sin omega t plus theta and its amplitude is i and its phase angle is alpha and magnitude can be obtained by parallelogram of forces principle and we can also find out phase angle alpha so this beautiful learning video has explained the concept of phasor as rotating vector and it's also explained how summation or difference of sinusoidal alternating current can be performed by graphical representation of phasors in our next video we'll understand the mathematical significance of phasor representation and how that make summation or subtraction by analytical method quite convenient and we'll also understand the multiplication and division of phasor quantities by the same phasor representation in polar form our other learning video of the same playlist are equally useful to enhance your subject understanding and exam score if you like support of exam centric notes or online doubt clearing classes from our channel do join our youtube membership happy learning have a nice time thank you very much